Um, Thomas the Woodcarver, if this is working, is already, uh, yeah, he's already going there. He's already streaming. Uh, moderation, uh, uh, close that. Right, at the moment, it's showing that we're waiting for me. So as it stands, we are not live, but we are. So, um, any comments? Um, at the moment, it says we're not live. Let's have a little look. Good afternoon, if you are with us. Um, fun and games, as always. As always with the live stream, there's a lot, lot going on, lot to set up. Um, as you can see, we've got a few different, few different cameras running at the same time. Um, I love spoons live and yes we are live right i found us so um great we're live um if you're joining us i'm just going to check the set of actually myself um yeah great i can see everything i can see everything i want to be able to see um i can speak to yourselves so i thought i'd have a little say hello um hope you're all well uh, any comments? Who we got there? We got Chris. You seem to be live. We are indeed, Chris. We are live. And we've got um, three different cameras. And uh, this one here, I can speak to you in. And then I've got one over here to show the carving. And we've got another one with Thomas Woodcarver cutting out on the scroll saw. So, yeah, we've got a few different things going on at the same time. Uh, it, it's a lot easier for myself to be able to speak with you all without having that scroll saw noise in the background. Um, I'm just going to check my sound, check the volume. Right, so Thomas Woodcarver is busy in the background there. He's cutting out something a little bit Christmassy. And uh, what I'm going to actually do, I'll take this camera off that I'm speaking into and I'll just use the two cameras to show the wood carving and to show him scroll sawing. Yeah, what he's cutting out there, just to explain to you all before I get started, is a nativity scene. And the idea, the nativity scene, it all sorts of interlocks in together. So you can actually sort of pick it up. And he's cutting two out at the same time. So we're using stack cutting. And we're using some juniper. Or who else we've got with us? The wood burning warrior. Hello. Long time, but great to hear from you. Um, everybody as well, worth checking out the Wood Burning Warriors channel. Some all sorts of different videos and ideas on there. We always encourage supporting one another. On that note, the Carvers channel. Don't forget to check out the Carvers channel. A new video just gone up there showing a beautiful carving of a fox. So well worth checking out. And also, um, Gabby. Gabby's in Romania. Gabby does some great demonstrations, makes um, toys and uh, sort of um, what we'd call a models, cars, all sorts of different scroll saw projects, uses a Hegner like ourselves, as does the carver, worth checking that out. Any comments as well from anyone, get them into us. Um, yeah, it's always great to speak to everyone. I am now gonna change things over and I am gonna go to a split screen so you can see a little bit better, hopefully, the carving being done. Uh, being busy, busy isn't even the word, to, uh, laugh out loud, too busy. I am glad to hear it. That sounds as if you're doing well, and I'm glad in these crazy times, I'm glad to hear that you are being kept busy, because, uh, yeah, not straightforward, not easy at the moment. Um, and uh, it's a case of uh, if you're busy, it's good to hear. And uh, I hope all is going well. I do check out your channel every now and then. It's good to see what you're up to. Um, and yeah, everybody else, anybody else as well looking, um, you know, looking at doing woodworking channels, always, uh, uh, if you want a, a bit of a shout out during the live streams, let us know and uh, we're always happy to do so. Right, I just brought in, so for anyone who doesn't know, this is our spoon for the year. We've got a pair of them that we're working on and I've just brought in the drawing. So the, the drawing that I've done on the other because I cut two out at the same time, one in teak, one in ash, and I've just brought that drawing in just to reference it, basically, so I can have a little look at that, and I can use that just as a little bit of a guide. Uh, as you can see, I'm gonna just have a quick check myself. Thomas the Woodcarver, so far, he has cut out, 
Oh, getting into leather working. Oh, fantastic. Just received a fee industrial servant. Brilliant. From woodworker who just passed. Oh, sorry to hear the circumstances you're getting it, but um, oh, it's good to hear that you, you're getting into other things. And uh, yeah, always great. Great to be busy, but sorry to hear that somebody had uh, passed away. Um, the carver has joined us. I was just telling them all about your latest video. Well worth a watch. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Even the deliberate mistake that was left in. So yeah, all of you will have to get over to the, after the live stream, after the live stream, get over to the carver's channel and have a little look and let the carver know what was the deliberate mistake that he deliberately left in the video, planned it all out to keep, keep, to keep us watching for longer. Check it out, it's a lovely demonstration. Um, I really enjoyed that carving demonstration and um, check it out, see if you can figure out what was the deliberate mistake the carver left. And remember, subscribe on this channel. The same with the Wood Burning Warrior. Don't forget to subscribe on there. And Gabby's channel as well. All full of great content for you to see. Right, so we're working on this sunflower. I'm glad you found it funny. <laughs> um, as you can see, we've managed to get the live stream up and going. I've started to figure out some of the different problems with the yellow box um, that I've had. At the moment, it says that it's all running perfectly, so that's good to hear. This week, just to get us back up to where we were before we bought the yellow box, I thought I'll just stream on uh, YouTube. And what I've decided to start doing, I'm starting to make notes. There we go. I'm starting to take notes of the problems that I'm getting. And, um, and so I'm trying to figure it out. Look at that. I did a network test, and when I've got... What it is, is that I couldn't get the Ethernet cable to work on it. And when I did the network test, somebody was saying about slow Welsh Wi-Fi, it's 37 megabytes. So it's, it's quick, but uh, we've got to get it working quickly enough. Right, Thomas Woodcarver's come in. We've been seeing you cutting out on nets. We've been watching you. Where do you want to cut now? Right, where do we want to cut now? So you can see so far. Um, and it's good afternoon to Thomas Woodcarver. And... Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, it's great to be able to have both of us on the live stream. <laughs> so the next thing, yeah. what, what we do, because this is one, and the difficulty for Thomas Woodcarver is when I've done the original design on the, uh, for, for this, I've made a few mistakes. So um, you, you're sort of trying to figure it out as, as you're going along. Um, I'll just make sure that that is on silent. Um, and I will just... Also, I'll leave that in. It shouldn't be causing us a problem on live stream. Ah, Gabby's with us. Hello, Gabby. We've been telling everyone about your channel as well. Right. The problem is, is because it's it's in pen. But basically, with this one, if you cut this out next, yeah. and the main thing to remember is to curl out on those when you go out like that, so it will trap in position. Do you understand? Okay. Basically, anybody wants to do a project like this. Shouldn't that be a bit thicker, though, You could make it a bit thicker. Yeah. Yeah make, the, make the... yeah, make that piece a bit thicker. So what I'm talking about is as you cut up there, this piece at the top needs to be wider. Can you see what I'm saying? This piece at the top here needs to be wider yeah. than this piece down there. Otherwise, it'll fall can out. I show you on the pen? Yeah, that's right. Well, if we go to about, where do you reckon, there? Well, easily, I'd say... A uh, little, little, little bit further? Little, yeah. little bit further. Um, what we might have to do then, if we come out to there with that, and then the other thing then is if you sort of... Because that's my concern, is that... See, that's the difficulty with this one, is that we need that one... We can make the roof a bit bigger. Yeah, we can make the roof a bit bigger, come out to there. Something like that. That's the key thing, though, is that we want it here has to be wider than here. Yeah. So that's what we're working out. Well, the manger out. is going to drop in. The manger is the only bit that does sort of, it traps in between there, but it, it should, it might fall out the manger, but that's the sort of yeah. least no, of the... This, is the, the... this is the shelter. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. This is secured inside, so that's yeah. why, that's why I'm looking for it to, you know, sort of go like that. You see? Okay. And then this can come out like that. And then this can go out. Yeah, and what do you want to do with the star? Right. So you, you can cut that goes cutting along there. That goes in there like that. Right. Okay? So that's that's one piece. Right. That's one piece there. And then this with the actual um the stable and the star, that's all one piece. 
Yeah, See? Okay. So that goes like that. Um, I hope this comes across what we're sort of discussing and what we're trying to do. It's, it's not a question of putting the, what do they say? Put in the horse before the cart. It's You're the, putting the stable before the... It's the stable before the, the manger. Or the manger before the stable. I don't know which would be correct. Can you, are you getting a better idea? So. It's basically the difficulty. Oh, the carver sent hello and then congratulations. Oh, thank you, Gabby. Hope all is well with you. So, so this bit's going to drop out. Right? That bit, no, but it, it holds in position, see, because it's wider at the top than the bottom. But it does come out. Yeah. yeah but when you put it all back together. And then, so if I can explain. Yeah. That bit comes out. That comes out, yeah. And also this bit with the star comes out. Yes, yeah, but that's all out. one single piece. You just can't get, you can't get the stuff. Well, when I designed, what it is, it'll be, it's, re, it's a really nice design when it's all finished. Okay. And okay. I thought it was very appropriate today being a Christmas design. But okay. what happens is when you're trying to put it all together. Can I borrow the pen? What's that? Can I borrow the pen? Could you borrow the pen? Yeah, no worries. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, so basically, um, yeah, I'm going to get back on to, uh, is that the best one? That one there. So Thompson Woodcarver is going to be back on. Um, he's going to be back on the scroll saw, so we get him back on there. So hopefully, hopefully, then we'll have the split screen back. Yeah, um, it, it's basically when I designed it. I'm terrible for doing this. I make little adaptions. I make little alterations as I go along, um, and sometimes I don't always remember to then redraw it afterwards. So, so and I haven't made it for a little while. We're going to do saying, don't work with children and animals. And old men, don't you? Well, no, I, I, it's the designer in that case. I take responsibility for it. It's, it doesn't... When, when you've finished it, you look at it, you'll put it all back together, and you go, ah, that's, that's nice. I, 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 can see where, I can see the idea behind it. It's basically, um, you know, for those interested in the scroll sawing, it's, it's well, based on a, a jigsaw. One. What's that? One, all done in one and that's the that's that's why i've given you a softer piece of mahogany and a piece of that the spanish savina because they're a bit softer to work in yet yeah, the idea do you want to pull the door thanks for that it just keeps that scroll sawing noise in the background down to a minimum as he's cutting out yeah the um the idea behind it it's sort of based on a jigsaw so that's the thinking behind it, is to have that jigsaw idea um, and then afterwards so you can put it all back together. So that is the, that's the thinking behind the design. Doesn't always work out, but that was it. And, and as what happens, see, it's a slightly older design. Hello, Sammy. What have you got there? Oh, have you got something for Uncle Math? Yeah. You'd have to go and ask Mummy where he is. Have you got a dirty face too? Oh dear, there we are. How was school today? All good? Good, good, good man. Right, um, I had to wood carve two horse ears last week and help repair an old wood carved horse. It was really fun to do, brilliant. Sounds like, is it a bit of um, restoration work that you were doing? Always challenging, but great if you can get nice results. I'll ask the question, is it coming up on your channel? Have you got, did you do any filming? Did you film it at all? Because uh, I'm sure people would be interested in seeing that if you did. Now this one here, what we're doing, we're just working on that surround. You can see Thomas the Woodcarver is back on the scroll saw and he is working. He has, but he'd be back soon. And then you can, it's Uncle Math, it is Uncle Math's birthday today. So that's why Sammy is waiting there. He's got a little present for him to celebrate his birthday. So he'll be back up from the field in a little bit to enjoy the rest of his birthday. So what we're doing, we're carving that surround. Uh, Thomas the Woodcarver then, he is continuing to cut the surround of our stable. Um, so he's at the top now and what he will find, um, this these bits that he's cutting out, they're not too bad. Oh no, I actually have not had any time to upload anything except a few shorts. I've seen some of your shorts. Yeah, great to see. Our workmen have just piled up with tons of commissions. Fantastic. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so what Thomas Woodcarver will find as he scrolls saw in, 
when he gets to the star, that's when that one becomes a little bit demanded. What I did though, with that particular design, if anyone's interested in making it themselves, um, the nativity, I make, I make that piece, I always make sure that when we're cutting that out, you use a slightly thicker piece of wood. The idea is that it's able to stand up afterwards. Um, and the trickiest part in terms of cutting out is changing the angles for um, the star. So that is where you have to do that turning, the most amount of turning. Um, it's where people, you know, if you're, if you're comfortable working with a spiral blade, that's the sort of job, doing those sharp angles was, would be easier on a um, spiral blade in some ways, but myself, I've never taken to working with spiral blades particularly. I'll also put out to everyone as well, how's the stream today? Is everything okay? No problems? I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident today that a lot of the problems, the teething problems that I've been having, I'm quite confident that we've figured a number of them out. And Thomas Woodcarver, if you're wondering why all of a sudden we've turned up with three cameras, uh, the one that Thomas Woodcarver is working with is an old video camera. I just say to him, actually, do you wanna, do you wanna put the main lights on? Might help as well, yeah. It's on. Oh, there we are, that's fine. There we are, I thought he, he had the one light off. He's coming back, he's on his way back in, he's got concerns. We put it back over to me for two seconds on the carving. What's your problem? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Those two little bits there yes. are going to be extremely delicate. No, they, they, if you look where I've remarked them, shall I show you? Where are you looking? So you got it out to there, see? So it comes out there and there. See? Can you see? It's a tricky, it's a tricky little bit, but you go round there, round there, down there, and there. You okay. see? So can you see the two wider lines? Okay. That's why if you look, it, it has been made wider. Can you see? Wider. That is the most difficult part of that design, is cutting. Uh, cutting those pieces. That's why you're doing it for you, Yeah, that's why I've left you get on with that one, see? Uh -huh. Oh, who've we got with us? Marty! Hello, Marty! Um, nice nativity, and I'm enjoying the carving. Ah, glad you're enjoying. Fantastic. I think we're starting to get to grips with some of the different issues, some of the different problems we've been experiencing. You reckon? Let's have a look. So you... Go a bit wider at the bottom. I can wider there. Yeah. And then turn, and then turn down, up, up and then up, and up. That's it. You got it. You got it. Tell me when you're ready to go. I'll put you back on the on the split screen. Okay, then. I'll put him back on the split screen, ready to go. Yeah. I hope everything's good with you, Marty. Great to have you with us as always. Um, yeah. Are you uh, working on anything yourself at the moment? Any projects going on? Right, now one thing I notice always, um, this light, because we got the big, the big softbox, the, the, um, the, the LED softbox, you notice any little lines, any sort of issue, they really do show up. And this gouge, and it shows up in this wood as well, as the light is shining on it, I'm just noticing that there is a little line where this gouge just needs a little bit of touching up, a little bit of sharpening. So we're always... You know, you're always finding little things like that. Um, so as we're going along, you can see it taking shape. What just happened there? I hope everything is fine. I think so. Yeah. And um, we got Thomas Woodcarver back on the scroll saw. And then I think he's going to just start cutting out. But now he's on to the, he's on to the most challenging part of his project. Just scroll saw names for my family. Sounds great. Fantastic. Great little... Um, Great gift ideas for, for Christmas. That's the nice thing with doing wood carving and, and scroll sawing. You can make nice presents and you can make them personal as well. Now the carvers as well, the latest video that I saw on the weekend from the carver, 
So far, I gotta be honest, it was my favorite video that I've seen so far. Really nice demonstration, but it was also nice to hear the carver explaining everything as he was making it, giving a little insight into the process. And for me, um, because of the way I carve, 99% of the time I'm securing things in the vise and I'm using the, those beginner sort of techniques of make sure you cut away from yourself and as much as you can, he says whilst going against the grain, across the grain, as much as I can, I'll be carving with the grain. And so it's, it's, it's interesting to see the different techniques and methods that, that you use to, 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 bring it, um, to bring it to life and to let it take shape. And it's, for me then, I, I enjoy seeing a demonstration like that because the techniques and methods, they are different from my own. And so it's, an, it's a nice insight because that's something, that sort of sculpture carving, doing animal figures and things is not something that I've ever had a lot of time to do. So to watch it, really nice, really enjoyable. Now this split screen as well, I hope it, um, I hope it comes across well, and I hope it gives you a, gives you a good insight into um, you know, how, we, how we go about the process, how the process of making takes shape. Um, I heard a fascinating story about that. It goes back in this country, I don't know if it's the same in uh, other parts of the world, but darts. They have the World Championships in darts. And um, it's very popular here, darts. And split screen completely changed darts. Goes back years ago. I remember watching a program on it and they were talking about how um, by using split screen, they could show the darts as the player released it, but also it hitting the board. And they used the split screen and it revolutionized it. Um, securing is so important. My husband had a tiny accident with the drill press because his work was not secured enough. Yeah, that can happen. Let's just say I'm glad that there were band-aids and paper towels nearby. Yeah, it can easily happen. And securing whatever you're working on, yeah, it is an important can thing. I just suggest? Yeah. Like, I've cut up to there. You're saying cut yeah. down to there. Yeah. Up there. Yeah. Up there and there. Why, yeah. why not just come up here you can do, but that's how I've always done it. See, look, when they just come up there with the star... Yeah, I, I, that's not how I do it. You want to go down to there? Yeah, go go down there, up, down, and, and around, because it gives that nice shape on the star. You, you want to go there? Yeah. Yeah, so just cut up there, up, and then down. Um, there we are, it gives, folks. A, it, gives, it gives a nice finish. This, this is how to make life difficult, okay? Yeah, but it gives you a nice finish. But there's going to be a little tiny bit there, Dave. See, see look, I'm going to go down yeah. there. So that's, because it's like a jigsaw, up that's there, what it slots into, see? There. Yeah. And that's the idea. It's based on that jigsaw thing. So now you'll have to keep a close keep a close eye on what Thomas the Woodcarver is doing there, because um, he's at the critical point with it. That is the the most difficult bit of cutting out on that design. But it's it's what gives that nativity, like a, a jigsaw feel to it. I don't think he's happy with me for making it a bit challenging, but um, we will see. And the nice thing with it though, you gotta remember, you're, you're cutting out two at the same time. So as you're cutting out the one, you're, you're getting two finished nativity scenes for your one cut on the scroll saw. Let's stop a minute and have a little check how he gets on with it. Right, so he's gone back around there. Okay, he's working his way right around to it. And let's see if he goes for it. So, yeah, he's just in by the start. I'll carry on carving as he's doing it. Pressure's on now. Having said that, if he does get it wrong, it's gonna be my fault. I won't hear the end of it if he does get it wrong. So he's just turning that corner. Yay. As long as it, if it goes and jumps now, that's it. Project over. But I, what I've tried to do, see, when you're doing a project like that one, 
that is the the main sort of that's the biggest demand when it comes to that project and what i tried to do was to select a couple of pieces of timber that were a little bit more sympathetic we put it that way and then the other techniques then that we're using we got that packing tape that one of you suggested to us which is always a fantastic idea we got that packing tape on top and that then helps to lubricate the blades as you're cutting out Right, so hopefully our simple little sunflower shape is coming along. There we are, see? He flew round it, no problems at all. He went right round it without an issue. Okay, so you can see we're working on this sunflower at the same time. Thomas the woodcarver is just working on the other side of the star. And that's the beauty of that little design, is that it all fits together afterwards like a little jigsaw. I do believe as well, if anyone's interested in making that one, I'm pretty sure memory serves. I put the design, I've actually put that on um, the website. Uh, one thing as well, if we get round to it, um, when Thomas Woodcarver finishes that one that he's cutting out at the moment, um, I have got a little video. Um, we get asked a lot about blades, information on scroll sawing, anybody getting started, that sort of thing. One of the things we regularly get asked about is um, is blades. And I've just got one just talking about TPI, teeth per inch. So as many of you will know uh, very well, we're working with that Niqua Speed, number nine reverse tooth blades. Um, and we're just looking in this video that will be in the middle of our live stream. We're looking at the TPI, which is teeth per inch but i won't say too much because that little video will explain all about it right let us continue we got that gouge there what's happening now is that because we got different things in different places i'm looking at different screens checking everything um i'm starting to leave gouges in places and then not be able to see where i've left them so you can see we've just one idea I did have for the sunflower would have been to um, actually colour. I was thinking of drilling out the centre and possibly grafting in a different piece of wood. So you've got the contrast between the sunflower, the centre. But I thought, well, we'll, we'll stick with Love Spoon tradition and carve it all from the one single solid block of wood. And the interesting thing with working on something like this um, is that... Um, the ash spoon that we're working on now, it will take me longer to carve this than it will to, um, to, to carve the other one in teak. Purely and simply, the, the ash is a little bit more difficult when it comes to the carving and the wood itself, a little bit harder, teak being full of teak oil. Don't take any notice of its reputation where they say it's tough as teak. It's a soft and lovely timber for, for us to work in. Right. Let's have a little look. We're going to use this, um, we're going to use a little spike and we're just going to use that just to create the effects of what the, uh, the it'd be sunflower seeds it would be. What the Spanish refer to as pipas. And they love to sit and have a chat and eat pipas in the sun. But not this time of year because it's a bit cold. I don't know what it's like yourselves. How many degrees is it? We're working in um, centigrade or Celsius, um, and it, for our cells, it's gone down as low as minus, minus five. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but definitely for us here, unusual weather, unusually cold, and the conditions underfoot. Got to be a bit careful, because it's a little bit slippery, to say the least. Oh, I can hear the scroll saw has just stopped cutting in the background, so... I think Thomas the Woodcarver, he has just completed that cut. <laughs> How'd it go? How did it go? Happy days? Well, you tell me. Let's see. Nobody wants. That's perfect. What do you want that cut out there? Look at that. Lovely stuff. What's that? Do you want that round? And then you cut that around that surround. Just cut that round there. Yeah. To there? Yeah, to perfect. There. Perfect. Yeah, and on the bottom I already sanded it, so just go around the outside, job done. So you and then, the outside cut now. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then you can we can put it all back together for everyone to see. 
Right, we're just about finished off as well with this sunflower. And I think, let's have a little look. As we're working on that sunflower, can we add a little bit of detail? I'll tell you what I will do is to just take off a little bit around the edges. Let's just take a little bit of, uh, again, this gouge needs a little bit of sharpening. and just see a line. A few of the gouges. They get a lot of use, our gouges, and I can just see little lines sometimes as we're carving it all out. So again, we carve around the outside. So we're carving with the grain. We carve in the one direction. And we can flip it over in the other direction and finish just to take off that edge. So just carving it round in the opposite way. So right around the outside. There we are. So at the moment I'm looking as well. Everything seems to be operating well. All seems to be going well. So we just finish off around the outside. Oh, and we got a cup of tea on its way. Thank you very much. And Nico's home from school as well. You okay, Nico? Yeah. Good boy. There we are. Right. So, I'm just wondering, should we add just a little bit of, just wonder if we could just add a few little details. Would that, what's your thoughts? A few little details just to enhance things. And here we go, so just a few little details like so. There we are. So just just how you can just add a little bit of detail. Careful Sammy, wash that cable. Just around the outside like so. Can you have a little look? The I'm just be concerned with the cable. With the ball, that's all. Right. So we're just going around the outside and then around like so. There we are. I'll ask Thomas the Woodcarver's opinion. What do you think? I've added, do you think that helps? A few little details? Oh, definitely. Just, just something. So the moral, right. The moral of this story is perhaps you can teach them all about the new tricks. Well, look. Can you see? Look, this is the this is the beauty of this one, is that we, we we separate these two out. So the beauty of it is that goes in that slots into there like that. Let's just. Will so be different wood. I'll change the no 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 it doesn't need to be I'll change it over so it's on that one there right. Let's move this out the way. Have you got all the bits? Brilliant. Brilliant. Here we are, and I'm pretty sure this design is on our website. That's the lovespringworkshop.com. I'm pretty sure it's on the website. And if you're interested in having a go, you can print it off for free. However, as myself and Thomas Woodcarver are discussing, if you make a few little adaptions, it will help it. It will make it a little bit easier um, for you to, to do. Right, let's look. That's not quite going in like so. So perhaps, perhaps we'll have to turn it. Yeah, so if you turn it round, right, so we're going to have to slot them in. The back so that slots in like so and these are lovely then because they fit together like a little jigsaw they all slot together as one piece there you go that goes in like that that goes in like that and hopefully if we've got it right there you go so the idea is see you can pick it up you can pick it up as like a jigsaw see and then, for instance, when you display it, you can push forward certain bits, like the background, you can push back the stable. So the idea is the surround and the stable, whoops, I haven't got quite that, got that on screen properly. So the idea, you can push Mary, Joseph, the stable, and the, um, uh, the, the manger forward, and then the background and the surround can be pushed back. So that's the idea with that one there. There we are. That one as well, if you sand it, you could sand that one, put a coat of shellac on it if you get a chance. If you sand it, sand it as one piece so that it's not so delicate on the 
belt sander. But that's how. Or what do you think? Would it be better to sand it as separate pieces? What I was thinking is you'd be putting separate wood. No, no, no. No, it's a it's like a jigsaw. That's the sort of novelty with that one, is that it, it all goes together like a, a bit of a jigsaw. Nah, no, that's right. Okay. But I tell you what it is. We got that. That should be like that. There you go. There we are. So yeah, a nice little idea. Right, I think what we will do. Um, are you having a little break on the scroll saw? Uh, <coughs> I'm good till I can finish that one when I start here. Are you, are you doing that now? I've sanded this down first. What we do, if you sand that down now, we'll just play a little video for everyone to see just about the scroll saw blades. Two seconds, we've still, we haven't got the volume on that one. the number system and in our beginner's guide we went through this before but I want us to focus solely on TPI. So the first question if you're watching this video that you might have what on earth is TPI? TPI stands for teeth per inch and it's a very simple idea the more teeth that you have on your scroll saw blade the finer the finish you will get when using it. So there you go, simple, end of video, no? Well, it's not as simple as that because the more teeth that you have, the slower the feed speed on your scroll saw. It's a little bit more complicated than it may first seem because for ourselves, we generally find that fewer teeth per inch is better than having a lot of teeth per inch. So what amounts are we talking? The ideal for our cells, I would say, is sort of between eight and 10 teeth per inch. We're working in hardwoods between half an inch and an inch in thickness. Won't touch on it too much, but just to touch on it, the number system, the ideal for our cells is usually around about seven to nine. So why is that? Well, basically, the number system is to do with the thickness of wood that we're cutting out, but the TPI, the tooth per inch, the important part of that is the less teeth you have, the faster the feed speed. And what we find is that somewhere between eight and 10 teeth per inches gives us a fine enough finish that we do not have to spend a considerable amount of time afterwards sanding, but it also gives us a faster feed speed. So it means that we can have a payoff between quality of finish and speed of production. That's the level that works for us. If you're doing finer work and you need a very, very high, high quality finish, and I would say an extremely high quality finish, you may need more teeth per inch. But for ourselves working in hardwood, because that has a factor in this as well, the type of material you're working in, those fewer teeth allow us to feed the item through the scroll saw at a more natural rate. It gives us a quality finish and it means that we're able to do our job more quickly and more effectively. As always then, there's all sorts of different blades. You have standard, spiral, reverse tooth, skip tooth, hook, reverse skip tooth, modified geometry, there's so many different ones. As we always say, it's worth having a little bit of a time when you first get into scroll sawing, where you try different brands, different styles, different types of blades. Give it a go, find out what suits you best. But in this video, we're focusing on that one single thing, and that is TPI, teeth per inch, and that is the basic rule of thumb, the more teeth you have per inch, the more fine the finish, the less you have, the faster the feed speeds. So it is a matter of finding the right balance that suits yourself. If you're asking for our own choice of blade, for over 20 years, we have worked with the Nikwa Speed, because recently I found out there's different types of Nikwa Reverse Tooth number nine blades, and that's the one we work with, the Nikwa Speed, reverse tooth number nine blade. 
It's the perfect balance when it comes to the thickness of wood that it can cut, as in half an inch to an inch in thickness, and the speed that it can feed, because it's around about 8 to 10 teeth per inch. So it does the job we want it to do. Hopefully that's useful. Let us know in the comments section if you've got any questions about TPI, teeth per inch, or anything to do with scroll saws and scroll saw blades. We know we've all got different preferences, so I'm sure you've all got different ideas. Get that in the comment section as well. What's your favorite blade? We've got videos coming up where we're gonna trial all sorts of different blades and share what we feel about it. But again, it's by no means a definitive guide. If you're new here and it's been useful and you like what you see, don't forget, subscribe and ring that bell so you know when we upload another video. And as always, thank you again for watching.